Good morning and welcome to a time of morning prayer for Chorley and Leyland Methodists for Saturday the 19th of June. How are you this morning? We are, of course, working our way through a Methodist way of life this week, thinking about evangelism, and we will speak of the love of God. We will speak of the love of God. Tomorrow morning, we have our online worship, which moves us on to thinking about how we will live in a way that draws others to Jesus. We will live in a way that draws others to Jesus. It is the season post Pentecost. We're reading through Acts of the Apostles. And this morning and this evening, we're at the end of chapter seven. Next week, we'll look at Acts chapter eight. And we're also marking Refugee Week, which finishes tomorrow. So I'm using a prayer this morning from All We Can, Methodism's Relief and Development Charity. They've produced resources for Refugee Week. And finally, finally, I'm going to begin with a prayer written by David Clowes, his book 500 Prayers for the Christian Year. David joins us this morning for our Empowering All event. Uh, we'd love you to come if you are free this morning from 9.45. We open a Zoom room, uh, we'll worship together, and then David's going to lead two sessions with us this morning. It's a completely free event. We'd love you to come along. We'll finish by half 11. Um, and if you need to know the details and get yourself booked in, then you can leave a message here or get in touch with our circuit administrator, Catherine Townsend. I think those are all the uh, preliminaries. So let's just spend a few minutes in morning prayer today. As I say, beginning with a prayer of approach written by David Clowes as he reflected upon 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13. Let's pray. Lord, we come to worship you in the name of the one who gives us hope. And we gather to honour the one whose promise of grace is true. Lord, you designed us for worship and we were made to sing your praises. In Jesus, you have given our lives a purpose vast and wide. Lord, we celebrate the one in whom we have new life and we give glory to him who is the door to eternal life. The Son of God has promised us his presence now and we have his assurance of the heaven of his love to come. So come today, let us worship the Lord, for he is worthy. Amen. Amen. Over the last few days, we've been reading through Acts chapter 6 and 7, which has introduced us to um, a whole new group of ministers in the new church, deacons, uh, one of whom the first named is Stephen, full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. He is detained by the temple authorities, the religious leaders who charge him with blasphemy for speaking the name of Jesus and ministering in Jesus's name signs and wonders and we've just spent quite a few uh, moments reading through Stephen's rebuttal, Stephen's testimony uh, where he appeals to the example of the founding fathers of the faith, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, David and char charges all of those listening all those religious leaders, with being stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, resisting the Holy Spirit, persecuting those who bring the message. Um, and so we move now to the very end of this chapter, a shocking end to chapter 7. We read from verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed at him with their teeth. But he, Stephen, 
being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And Stephen said, look, I can see heaven opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears and ran at him with one accord. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's just another two and a half verses to end the chapter and it links us to a character we're meeting for the first time called Saul, who will be the focus of most of the rest of Acts of the Apostles and the writer of many of the letters that remain for us to read in the New Testament. But what a chilling way to end the reading today. The witnesses, um, they cast him out of the city and stoned him. He was in violation of the law. Um, let's just be quiet for a moment. Stephen is described as the first martyr of the Christian faith who gave an account um, gave his witness statement and uh, he is taken out of the city and stoned to death. He's given a vision just before he dies of heaven opened and the Son of Man, Jesus, standing at the right hand of God. Um, undoubtedly his face shining with that glorious picture. Um, we remember all the martyrs, all those who have suffered for their faith. Just a moment of quietness. I'm heartwarmed by the encounter, the experience that Stephen has just before he is taken out and stoned. It's like um, a promise. You remember Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come and take you to where I am. And in this moment, it's as if Jesus um, lifts a lid on heaven and Stephen is able to see where it is he's going and even more importantly that who it is that is there to meet him Jesus is there um, just as he promised I will come and take you to where I am so that where I am there you may be also was Jesus's promise and there's a vision of that and it's clear that some people when they are close to death uh, perhaps in hospital, perhaps in a hospice, perhaps at home, um, can sometimes appear to have a vision, uh, a door opening, a window opening, a light in the distance coming closer. People speak of these experiences, not as something um, that causes anxiety, but actually of, of something very comforting, something very affirming, um, something quite precious and beautiful. And it can be a comfort to those who uh, clearly see that their loved one is being shown something. Um, I wonder what those moments are going to be like, but uh, nothing to fear in Christ. Um, bold I approach the eternal throne and claim the crown through Christ my own, writes Charles Wesley. But for those listening, those religious leaders, their, their hearts are uh, kind of torn, they're grinding their teeth, 
with with anger. They cry out with a loud voice. They stop their ears. They just stop listening to what Stephen is saying. It's too much to bear. And with one accord, uh, that phrase has been used a couple of times in Acts of the Apostles already, with one accord. And that's been about the unity of the disciples. They were all together. They had all things in common. The Holy Spirit came and filled them all. They were all of one heart and one mind. But here there's an opposition that is of one accord. And with one accord, they take Stephen out and they stone him to death. That is chilling and that is shocking. And as I say tonight, we'll read the last couple of verses where we're introduced to a character called Saul. Um, and maybe, maybe Stephen's martyrdom, the manner of Stephen's dying is going to be part of uh, what works on Saul, um, part of Saul's awakening to the truth. Let me share with you this prayer for Refugee Week and then one or two other prayers just as we go into this day. Um, Stephen, in a very extreme way, spoke of the love of God and one of our commitments as Methodist people, as covenant disciples, is to speak of God's love. How might we do that today? How will we have opportunities to let others know that they are loved by God, that God is a God of love and his love is for them? May we find simple, creative, beautiful ways to speak of God's love today in our everyday life. And all we can prayer for Refugee Week Loving and tender God, today we pray for the Rohingya people living in the camps in Cox's Bazaar, Bangladesh. In particular, those affected by the recent fire in the camp. This day we hold before you all who are found longing for a place to call home. We pray for peace in the homeland of refugees fleeing conflict and that all involved might find boldness and humility to build societies where all feel safe. At this time, we remember Christ, the bringer of peace. Come shine your light to shine upon the refugee and those suffering today. Bring peace, healing, and above all, a sense of belonging to all people. Amen. And now, Father, we commit this day to you, to serve you, God, Father, Son and Spirit. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may think and speak and act for thee. Fill us with your love that we may communicate God's love to all we meet in creative ways. Give us a good Saturday and a great weekend. And we do pray for those we know who are suffering in any way, in body, mind or spirit, that God's healing peace, God's healing love, would be upon all for whom we pray today. As Jesus taught us, let's share together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you today. Have a great day. And if you're free this morning, do come and join us for our Empowering All event. Join us from about quarter to ten, just before ten o'clock. And the event is between ten and half eleven on Zoom. We'd love you to come. Just get in touch if you want the Zoom details as we invite David Clowes, a supernumerary Methodist minister, author of several books on prayer, to talk to us about a life of prayer. It's going to be a great morning. Uh, join me this evening at half past nine for Facebook Live evening prayer. And then tomorrow, our online worship and Zoom coffee and chat. And I'll be back Monday morning for morning prayer. We've got two more weeks up till the end of June of morning and evening prayer. 
Take care. Have a great day. God bless you. Bye for now.